When I first started working at a climbing gym, yes, it was before I went Super Saiyan 3, I was told a fascinating fact that I remember to this very day. The knot keeping me from falling right now, the figure eight knot, has never failed. Yes, ropes have snapped on climbers and gear has broken, but the figure eight knot itself has never been the cause of any accident, or at least its failure rate is so infrequent it's not worth mentioning. It is the knot for tying people to the ends of ropes, and is taught to every climber at every climbing gym on the planet. Why is this knot so strong? Now entering the facility. Knots, one of the oldest human technologies. Intentional complications of cordage that are meant to do everything from secure ship sails to make your hair all pretty pretty. There are dozens of different kinds of knots all meant to be strong and do something in one way or another, but your first piece of knot science today is that a knot does not make a rope stronger. In fact, it's actually just the opposite. Any knot will necessarily decrease a rope's ultimate strength. Even the double overhand radium release fisherman's blood hitch? Uh, yeah? I mean, you could be making all that up. I don't get that naughty. Or do I? <laughs> a rope is a tension transfer device. When all of the available fibers inside the rope are under tension, therefore, is when the rope is at its strongest. Whatever a knot is meant to do with the rope, it necessarily introduces bends into the system. Now, some portion of the rope is under some compression, not tension, meaning that not all of the fibers in the rope are pulling their weight. Literally, some aren't carrying any weight at all. So the more fibers in compression, the weaker the rope. What follows then is your second piece of knot knowledge. The tighter the first bend in any knot, the most loaded part of the knot in the first failure point, the weaker the rope. Curves and loads in other parts of the knot do not actually affect its strength. So just looping a rope around a carabiner, for example, with a sharp, tight, 180 degree bend can cut a rope's full strength in half. And if you already know anything about knots, strength testing verifies that knots with more severe first bends are indeed the weakest. Of course, this also means the opposite is true, and it's your third piece of knot knowledge for today. The strongest knots will be the ones with the gentlest first bends. It makes sense if a straight rope is the strongest, then any knot with a first bend that's closest to straight and doesn't deviate from it will be the strongest. You're straight. Why aren't you strong? Well, uh, not everyone can be as jacked as you are. Eh? You have synthetic muscles. Why don't you just work out more? Why don't you just run the ad, please? Thank you, Savage. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and Chris Hemsworth that you have at home, Kyle Hill. You know, here at the facility day-to-day, -day, I'm researching a lot of weird stuff online. How much paint it would take to fill up a person. I need a real shark behind me while I surf. The sponsor of today's episode, Surfshark. Surfshark is a premium virtual private network service that encrypts all of your information sent between your devices and the internet. You can use Surfshark to bypass censorship, mask your IP address, change your device's virtual location to access YouTube in Nigeria. Surfshark does not monitor, track, or store what you do online. That means no connection or activity logs. And unlike other premium VPNs, Surfshark now has thousands of servers in over 100 countries. Be secure on the majority of the Earth's surface. Use the offer code KYLE for three extra months free. You're welcome. There's a money back guarantee and you get an unlimited number of devices on just one account. While you're surfing, protect your turf. Surfshark. So, you know the basic physics. A straight rope is necessarily the strongest. Any bend in that rope or knot creates some point of weakness, and the strongest knots in general have the gentlest first bends. Now, back to the physics of the mighty figure eight knot. Notice how the first bend here is much gentler than, say, a rope just looped through a carabiner. It helps the rope maintain up to 80% of its strength, making the figure eight one of the strongest knots, period. It's so strong, in fact, that when climbers in the United States encountered a similar knot in an orientation that created sharp bends under loading, they dubbed it the European Death Knot. 
It's actually relatively safe thanks to the strength of modern climbing ropes and gear, but testing has shown that this overhand bend knot can be up to 30% weaker than the classic figure eight. But as it turns out, not science is surprisingly complicated. And today we know, thanks to mathematics, material science, and physics, that bends in a knot and their gentleness or not <laughs> are not the only factor. In 2020, researchers from MIT used special rope that changed color in response to stress to investigate additional variables influencing knot stability. They found that the stronger knots generally have more strands that cross each other and specifically have strands that loop parallel against each other, pulling in opposite directions and crossing strands that twist in opposite directions. These circulations and twist fluctuations, respectively, create opposing forces of friction inside of the knot, making it both stronger and less likely to untie. And before we leave the specifics behind here, I just want to flag that knot science spans physics, mathematics, biology, theory, practice. It's an extremely deep field of study, fitting for one of humanity's first and most enduring technologies. Knowing all this, I'm going to show you how every climber on Earth ties your standard figure eight knot. I'm going to make a bite in the rope. I'm then going to run this end through that bite, which will make that classic figure eight shape. But we're not done yet. We place one end through both points of our harness. That's what ultimately keeps us so safe. And then what I do with the knot is I run that end back through the figure eight. Notice how I'm creating those circulations that the MIT paper identified. I'm having parallel rope segments moving past each other in oppositely loaded directions, which the paper identified makes for a more strong knot. But not everything about the strength of a figure eight knot or knots in general is so mathy and theoretical. There are practical reasons why this is the best knot for climbing too. The figure eight knot is practically failure proof. It's simple. It's easy to learn. It's easy to tie. Maybe most importantly, it's easy to visually check at a glance whether or not it's tied correctly, thanks to its nice symmetry. The knot can be hard to untie after you fall on it, but that also means it won't ever untie itself while you're climbing. And finally, in real life situations, like when I used to teach people this knot myself, it's been basically proven that a properly tied figure eight loop is more reliable than more complicated knots you may want to use tied the wrong way. Simple, reliable, safe. Of course, none of this is to say that other knots aren't useful in climbing. They are, and I'm not saying that any knot is going to kill you, even the European death knot. That's not going to happen. Modern climbing ropes are so strong and so elastic with breaking strengths in the thousands of pounds that it's virtually impossible to cause one of these knots or one of these ropes to fail. Still, I know that when I'm climbing or when I teach people how to climb, I want the physics on my side. I want the knot that has never failed. Probably. Most likely, but with some asterisks in, until next you time. You just go work out right now. Because not everyone has every, all the- Door at the gym. It's not fair, you have synthetic muscles. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of this video, especially Xyla Fox Lynn. If you want to follow her and all the awesome makey stuff she does on her channel, do so. It's Kyle Hill approved. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat and have me belay you one day, go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill or hit the join button here on YouTube if you don't want to use all that. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on RA here in every single episode. As you can see, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you. I don't know how I'm going to pass the time while all of your names. Now, I did mention that sharp bends can cause a rope strength to decrease. And now you might be asking yourself, Kyle, if you've ever been to a climbing gym, well then why do they have the ropes in those tight bends at the top of the wall loop like that? Well, it turns out that at a certain diameter, it is indistinguishable to the rope from straight. So the rule of thumb is basically if it's four, if the bend that a rope is going over is four times, at least four times, the diameter of the rope itself, then the rope 
is in basically all tension. And that's why all modern climbing gyms have these bars that the rope, the top rope, goes around. So it's not creating a decrease in strength. There's probably some decrease. It's fine. Getting all flustered about it. I'm tired. Thanks for watching. Gift that.